Hey guys, Chris here with the Good Old Gamer. So welcome to the very first episode in the Mismatch World Record series. So today I'm going to go over what is the Mismatch World Record. I have mentioned this a few times on the channel before, but we've had a lot of new people come and join us, so I figured I'd go over that one more time in this Pioneer episode. This is also going to be kind of like a beta test, as I'm not entirely sure how I want this series to progress. I'm thinking this would actually be better as a live stream series instead of doing like traditional videos. Now, live streams are a bigger pain in the ass to get set up, so we'll see. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I want to hear your guys' thoughts about all of this. If you like the idea, the premise, how we can adjust things, I want your opinions, so make sure to leave a comment. But first off, let's explain what it is that I'm even talking about here. So stick around and check it out. Starting off, 3D Mark used to be the PC gaming benchmark. This used to be what you would test your brand new system out on anytime you built anything, just to make sure that your system was comparing well with other systems out there, and many people still use this today. What's really awesome about this benchmark suite is all you have to do is go to results, go ahead and click the advanced tab, and you can select whichever test that you want to compare against. And this will go back all the way down to 3D Mark 2003. So this is DirectX 9 level GPUs, and I think this may even be DirectX 8. And then you have DirectX uh, 10 with 3D Mark Vantage. And then of course, DirectX 11 with Fire Strike and DirectX 12 with Time Spy. So you can span a very wide array of GPUs with this test suite. So Fire Strike, for example, is extremely popular. So let's check that out. Now let's look up a very popular test. So something like the 8700K uh, with, let's say, a 1080 Ti. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so, and one GPU because, well, let's face it, nobody in real life uses more than one GPU. So searching, all right. So right here, you can see the top score for this particular hardware combination. Now this is a very popular combination. This is what benchmarkers, professional benchmarkers will be going for. This top spot is coveted and typically these guys are sponsored by things like MSI, Asus, Gigabyte. These numbers are pushed by professionals. LN2, this is stuff that you, me, and the average consumer are not going to be achieving. So what about if we change this up a little bit and go with Core 2 E8400, okay? This is a complete mismatch, and that's the reason why I named the series what I did. But let's go ahead and check this out. Now there's only one result that popped up, okay? It's 6529. So, Mismatch World Record is not to try to go after the premium world record. That's impossible. Those guys get 15, 20, 100 GPUs to bin the absolute best of them. That is not realistic for an average person to do. But now, if you wanted to go for a world record, you could compete against this one guy right here. If you have a 1080 Ti, you could pick up an E8400 for almost nothing, and you could go and take this top spot. So that's what Mismatch World Record is, is you take one completely different generation part, either a CPU or a GPU, and compare it with another one. So you take either a more modern GPU or CPU and pair it with a very old uh, GPU or CPU, depending on which combination you want to go with. So the first combination that I decided to go with was the i7-2600K, because it was already in my test bench for the uh, Sandy Bridge IPC testing, and then... Good friend of the channel, Radeon Omega, he actually donated a Radeon HD 5850 GPU. Now, I went ahead and put some new thermal paste on this bad boy, and this thing runs surprisingly cool and quiet, even overclocked to the max. So I was actually able to push MSI Afterburner to the maximum with this thing, and even with the reference cooler, it held up really well. So thank him if you see him in the comment section below. That's really awesome of him to donate that, and that allows me to go ahead and do tests like this right here. And that's really what I want to do. You know, collecting all these parts for these IPC tests and other testing, we might as well have fun with it. This is something that we just don't do. You know, there's too many people out there bitching about RTX cards. 
to even stop and actually have fun with what it is that they already have. And I think that that's the key component that's really missing from the community out there. Now, enough of that. Let's go ahead and check out these benchmarks. So starting off, you have to see where your competition is before you do anything else. So at 2579, Mr. William Barry, he was the leader. He had the top spot. And his uh, 5850 was running at 770 megahertz with 1119 megahertz on the memory. Now, it looks like he was running a stock clock 2600K, or possibly this wasn't reporting right, but these are the stock clocks for that CPU. And then eight gigabytes of RAM, that's really not too big of a deal. It really kind of just comes down to memory speed. That is a little bit important because he was only running 1333 on a Z77 motherboard. Kind of a strange choice there. But still, he was able to take the top spot with this score. So in my first run, I came up with 2434 in comparison to his 2579. So obviously, I did not overtake him in this particular battle. Now, this was with my 5850 at stock clock. So 725 on the core and only 800 megahertz on the memory. So as you can tell, that's a pretty big reason why we lost. And then, of course, I just had stock CPU going at this point as well. However, kick that overclocking to high gear and boom, there we go. We take the lead, 2604, new world record for an i7 2600K with a Radeon HD 5850. And it was a clean sweep across the board. Every test, we take the win. And this was achieved by maxing out MSI Afterburner and pushing those sliders all the way up to maximum 775 megahertz on the clock speed and 1125 megahertz on the RAM. Of course, we went ahead and bumped up our CPU up to four gigahertz. And yeah, we know for Sandy Bridge, that's like walking in the park. But I figured, hey, it's still more than where he had. So let's just do that. All right. So pushing it to the absolute limit. We can see here 2615. This is the world record right now for this combination. So as you can see across the board, we did see a little bit of an increase in everything except for the graphics tests. And that's because I maxed out uh, Afterburner and I didn't really feel like going to a more exotic overclocking method because it wasn't necessary. We already took the crown. But I did take my i7 2600K up to 4.5 gigahertz. So between 4 gigahertz and 4.5 gigahertz, 3D Mark really doesn't care. However, if you are trying to squeak out every last little bit of performance, well, there is a little bit in it, but 11 points for 500 megahertz, not really worth it unless you absolutely need it. So now what's really, really cool about this is if I search i7 2600K, and then I like how it's like, no, use the regular 2600. So you gotta make sure it punches in the right stuff for you. All right. And then you hit search, boom, top spot, numero uno. That would be the good old gamer crew. So that's me, that's you, that's our community. Because without you guys, I wouldn't have all this stuff on hands. So you're as much part of this win as I am. I'm just the face, the voice, and I guess the blood, sweat, and tears. You guys are the support system. So we did this together. Our first number one victory taken over. And there's plenty more combinations out there just like this. Now, right after I went ahead and achieved this, I went ahead and posted it on our Discord. And it really spurred something in the community. A lot of you guys out there went ahead and started posting up your own numbers and your own mismatch hardware combinations. So realistically speaking, I'm probably going to end up competing against you guys here in the not too distant future. And that's really awesome. And that's really what I wanted to do with this is use more budget friendly old hardware that if you want to go ahead and try and beat my scores, go for it. Have at it. Post it up. Put it in the discord. I'll go ahead and shout it out and say, oh, we've been overtaken. And the same thing goes for other YouTube channels or tech tubers or reviewers out there. Have some fun with it, guys. If you have these parts laying around, go for it. I want to see you come for me, and then this way, I can go ahead and respond. And we can have fun with it. Nobody take this thing seriously. I mean, this doesn't matter. It's 3D Mark. It's just there for fun. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, you can use really old GPUs as well. Like I said, pretty much DirectX 9 on newer. I'm personally going to stick with 3D Mark 06, Vantage, Firestrike and Time Spy. Those are really the only ones I'm going to run because there's so many different versions out there. 
And uh, I'm just keeping it to the stock standard ones that anybody could get their hands on back in the day. So it's the exact same benchmarks that I used to run years ago on those older benchmarks. So no extra tests or anything like that, going ahead and inflating scores. So just use the stock standard basic stuff, basic settings, just let it go. Well, already guys, I'm really kind of curious. what do you guys think? Do you think that this is kind of fun? It's a little bit different. Go ahead and get those world records. I'm thinking about going ahead and picking apart like either a CPU or a GPU and then having you guys vote on the other component to go ahead and put in there. So like I might say the Athlon 64 6000 plus and then I'll give you a list of five GPUs and you guys get to vote on it. Let me know what you guys think about that option. Let me know about maybe doing live streams or do you prefer videos like this where you can just come and go and see it whenever you're ready? Which which way do you think might be better for this type of setup? And do you think it's a good idea at all in the first place? I had a lot of fun with it. I, I really did. And I really kind of wanted to start on some other stuff. I ran into issues with my 6800 Ultra and my 6600 GT as well. Apparently, that 6000 series from NVIDIA, it technically works on Windows 7 64-bit, but it doesn't like to work, so that's gonna take a little tweaking on my part to get it to go, or I might just have to use Windows XP and just say, screw it. We'll see which way I need to go on that front. But anyway, I'm really curious to hear what you guys got to say. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really helps me out. And if you want to go ahead and help continue growing the channel and helping me get this tech on hands, please consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. That really does help me out. And that's literally the reason why I can do these tests right here. And if you have any spare parts that you don't need and you're looking to donate, please hit me up on Discord. Please direct message me and we can get that moving. And I'll give you a shout out just like I did for Mr. Radion Omega. Well, that's really all I have for today, and I will catch you guys in the next video.